This centre will not close. Um, and I can't make it any clearer than that. Now, um, I happen to be chair of the Education Select Committee right now, and it's a great job. And one of the things that we are committed uh, to providing for and supporting is, in fact, early years. Everybody in House of Commons knows perfectly well, as far as I can see, that um, a good start is, is what is necessary uh, to, for a continued um, development in terms of uh, education. Uh, in, 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 in all its forms. And just for good measure, I'd like to underline my own personal support uh, for statutory provision of uh, PSAG, which is Personal, Social and Health Education. I think that should start early and should not stop. Uh, it's a really important part of our uh, uh, a child's uh, uh, so, so the founding years, if you like, um, and uh, it seems to me that the campaign that we have had thus far to promote PSHE uh, is an important one, and, and ultimately, um, I think we'll be successful at making the case that it should be statutory. Right now, though, the focus is on making sure that existing PHSC is brought to the highest possible standards, and I think that is absolutely right. Now, as regards this particular uh, centre, uh, there are no plans to close it, and I just want to make that absolutely clear. This centre will not close. Um, and I can't make it any clearer than that. Uh, so I've checked up with uh, Councillor Paul McLean, who's the uh, Cabinet Member responsible for such matters uh, at County Hall, and that's what he has said. He's slightly disappointed that there seems to be some misunderstanding about that. Um, but um, there it is. Life is what it sometimes turns out to be. Um, amazingly, I'm a really pro-European person, but somebody has actually managed to inform the Western Daily Press that I was on the out campaign, and I was furious about that, and I rang them up and I said, I want an apology, that is an effrontery. Um, uh, so press the press, and I'm sure Ben would agree with this, doesn't always get everything right, but Ben is a, a, a fabulous local uh, editor, and we should always uh, be grateful Can you say him. some more about what's happening? I am. I've just said, it is not closing. Now, do we all know what that means? It means, it means that this centre will still be here uh, beyond... Uh, as a children's centre. As a children's centre. As will, will still be here beyond April uh, 2020. Let me finish my sentence and then you'll find out. No wonder nobody ever gets to know what's going on if we keep interrupting. Um, uh, this, there is a consultation process underway which has not yet finished. It will finish on April the 11th this next month. Um, and obviously the, the, uh, the consultation process will have to be thought about. Um, it is up to the operators, your organisation, to think about how you would want to uh, influence that consultation process. And I know you're thinking of submitting reports. But just on that, we have to be very careful here because we are a charity. So we yeah. have, when you use the word influence, we have to be fairly neutral uh, on that part. But you, are, but, but you are the operators here yeah. at the moment. So therefore, until April 2017, no matter what happens, you will still be coming oh, yes. uh, operating this. Yeah. So for, uh, from now until April 2017, uh, that, that is the case. Beyond April 2017, there may be a different arrangement and that will be informed by the consultation. And I would say there are three things to bear in mind. One is that whilst a lot of people do come here, perhaps more could or should. Um, and uh, that's why the council is very determined to promote an outreach approach uh, to making sure that more families uh, can actually access facilities like this. Because the irony is that the less likely you are to be coming to a, a centre like this, the more likely it is that you should be coming to a centre like this. All evidence points to that, so that's why an outreach programme is so important. And uh, the average uh, it, across the whole of Gloucestershire is about 50% of people who could come to actually do come. It is quite likely that that is not a figure appropriate to this particular centre, but nevertheless it does signal that more people could be coming to the centre. So an outreach programme is important. So the first point is let's be sure we understand that. So that's the second point. 
Um, the next point is really about um, the uh, importance uh, of uh, the changes around this locality. Because as you can know, uh, that estate at long last is being re rebuilt because it was not a satisfactory place uh, and will be more housing as well. And this has a relevance not just to this centre but also to the school because of course the school has an interest in having more pupils as well. Uh, so taking, taking those two facts into uh, consideration and, and also that we're having a consultation about where we want to go next, I think the prospects for this centre are really rather good. So we've got to be clear, we want it to stay, I'm backing it personally, and what we want to see is proper provision appropriate to the needs of this area, bearing in mind that point I made about outreach and the changing circumstances of the community. Any questions? Yes, first yeah. of all, obviously you're doing consultation on having people come here, but you've just not found loads and loads of council houses, so obviously the people that attend it aren't as going to be as high, so when you're consulting over the next year, there's going to be tons of families that aren't going to be living here, but then possibly when you close the centre, you're going to move all these families here that are going to be in high need of those kind of things, and then they're completely missed out on the consultation. Yeah. So are you going to take that into account? Uh, well, obviously, the first point I would repeat this centre is not closing. Well, um, uh, the second point is the houses that have been knocked down, as you put it, were knocked down by me personally, but uh, were, are being replaced. Because that's what's necessary. We can't just have people living in houses which are inadequate just to uh, keep the uh, lo local services going. Oh, well, no, that's what not we what I have meant. to do meant is, is make that. sure that people are living in decent houses and that the services for those people are of a suitable standard. So that is why uh, there is um, a, a consultation and it is also why this centre is guaranteed to keep going as it is until April 2017 because that's what the contract says. And then beyond that, further changes yeah. might be made, but the centre itself will be retained. And I think it's a very important centre to support. Yeah. Neil, can you be very clear? What are the aims of this consultation? Uh, well, like any uh, um, uh, reviewer from time to time, uh, the, the contract is clearly ending in 2017, so the council is having to think, well, what do we do next? And, you know, the point that, that, that uh, the lady just made um, is, is a wholly re relevant one, because obviously there are movements in, in, in uh, families and movements in people and changes in, 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 the, in what, what, so what's So what's the aims of the consultation? Well, to find out what people want uh, and to make an informed decision so that what people do want is properly provided. So the aim of the consultation is to find out what people want? Well, um, you know, that's what consult consultations are for. Well, I hope they were a bit more specific than that. Um, well, you know, it, it, the, the consultation started in January. Um, uh, it finishes in April. There's still basically three weeks to go of that consultation. Um, so get involved. Okay. I think now it's probably fair to say that the consultation is is um, slightly tricky to understand. But I've gone and looked at the paperwork around the consultation, and I've actually asked questions of the of the county council officers. And what I'm still struggling to understand with the consultation is what are the actual services you're cons uh, are being consulted on being provided in the future? Now, that's not your job necessarily to know that. It should be my job to know it. It's the GCC job to provide me with that information. And they seem to be struggling. <laughs> <laughs> Consulting on changing services, but they can't actually say what they want to change the services to, other to other than some kind of amorphous community supported provision. With, with, you know, what does that look like? Where 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 are the health visitors going to be? Well, where's the kind of cook you have joined up? Uh, well, there's certainly going to be pro professional uh, uh operation. I've actually not read that read that also in in, in, in uh, the email that I've got from Paul. So it's not just going to be 
uh, some sort of uh, voluntary based and voluntary exclusive operation. Well, look, this is a consultation. Um, you know, you know, uh, you, you, a consultation is, is something where we have expressions of opinion. Uh, and the most forceful of those expressions will, will become the basis of the outcome. Well, maybe, maybe the people from um, Hill Valley and Vale could actually ex um, give some information on what is being proposed in the future. Because I think the proposal for here is for the, one, will be one of this will be one of thirteen children's centres, and it's to have, possibly have early childhood care and education, or could run from here, right. or it might run. There won't be. Um, at the moment, it could be run by the children's centre, but it won't be able to be run by the children's centre. So we don't know who's run that. There'll be universal services run by voluntary community groups, but we don't know how that will be funded or managed or supported. Um, and then there'll be bases for professionals from different agencies. So different professionals will be able to use the building, come in and go out again, but there won't be any core. Um, that's, that's, that's my understanding. Well, it's not necessarily the case, though, is it? That's because, proposal. yeah, that's uh, proposal I, 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 I think I, I think that, I think it's really important to understand that this is a consultation. But that's a it is not a fait accompli. Yeah, it is a con con uh, a consultation. Yeah. That's why I'm here. That's why we're talking about the consultation. That's why we've got a good three months to uh, participate in a consultation, and it's underway and will not conclude what we learned for that um, And you know, there are other ways of, of signalling to the council through Sarah, for example, who is the councillor, um, uh, to do just that. And that's what um, local democracy is all about. Um, but from my perspective, as member of parliament, I support children's centres. I always have to. What you've just described in the, in, in the proposal, in the, in the few words you've been able to use, which I don't, I'm not criticising you because obviously. Um, at this stage, the, the proposal is not particularly detailed, but you've got the, the, the key words there, services. Now, um, how those work in the context of this building is still to be worked out, but that's what the consultation is for. It's very hard for parents, it's very hard for people who actually work um, in, in this area to understand it. It's very hard for parents to understand that they're not getting their way through. Yeah, I accept that. Um, but and that's, then, then, but, they, then the consultation isn't actually very valid. Yeah, but the good news is, the good news is yeah. that um, this current arrangement that um, is organised by you carries on for another year whilst the consultation first of all takes place. The consultation ends, though, and yeah. then, then it will yeah, be yeah. decision But there's still another year to work out what actually happens. I think there's lots of talk about consultation, but who are you consulting? Are you, have you, have you well, spoken? Consultation is as open as you can I know, but lots of people in this area might not be able to access that consultation. They might not know it exists. Are you talking, are you going around and talking to well, others? Well, that's my are the, issue. Is uh, the that, data uh, being collected about how the mothers use the centre, for what the differences they are? Well, Sarah's the councillor, so she's in a better place to answer that. Um, but uh, I would have thought uh, consultations uh, in a normal way are sort of made public as, as widely as they possibly can be. So I guess that that is the case. I mean, there has been. I mean, there has been lots of meetings. Yeah. You know, I think you have to say there have been meetings. There haven't been particularly well attended. Mm. Uh, that's there, and certainly some of the res is it right that Stroud that we see a higher response from the Stroud area yes. than other areas of Gloucestershire, really? Yeah, really. uh, yeah. Um, but there's been meetings and there's the online consultation. You might find the online consultation, I think, is a little bit um, awkward to navigate. So, around. how many meetings has there been so far? Well, there's been all over the county. Yes, yeah, so so how many? We've had running. Yeah. Well, we can bring in the local authority, and there have been some run with the people are concerned, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 So uh, that's that's the that would be able to sort the ordinary way of proceeding. One of my concerns is that um, the previous um, consultation that showed that uh, apparently that a large number of parents wanted to be volunteers. I've asked <coughs> how many parents actually responded to that consultation and how many expressed an interest and I talk, talk about an interest as opposed to saying that they will actually do it yeah. and it worries me that um, there may not be 
provision if you're going to rely on volunteers. Also, if um, as children's centres are about helping people into work because that's that's the government policy that parents with young children ought to be thinking about work. Mm. If those parents then move on into work, great for them, but what happens to the group? You know, the provision is going to be very patchy and possibly very inconsistent. It also doesn't pick up the children with need because you haven't got the trained staff who might recognise those needs. And, and I'm very concerned about that. Uh, well, first of all, I don't know, I'm not privy to the, the, the statistics about how many parents volunteer or... But if, if they're talking about 20, of whom by the time all this comes into place, some of those will have moved on for all sorts of reasons, their children have, you know, moved on to school or whatever, then you're not going to have that 20. You know, these are only parents who've expressed an interest. Yeah, yeah, well, first of all, I'm not privy to those statistics, so I can't answer your question specifically. I don't know if 20 were asked, 20 were asked in Stroud, 20 are, you know, wider but also, area. how do these parents pick up? On the, on the specific needs that some children have and some families have. Yeah, well, if they don't I'm have right, that, I'm, that skill training. I'll start again. First of all, I am not privy to the statistics that have been collected in any consultation about parental uh, um, contributions, but I do know that parents do effectively uh, operate in, in voluntary circumstances extremely well. Um, and uh, that's something to, to be saluted and, and uh, appreciated. And I don't think it should be um, uh, in any way undermined by, you know, they can't do it, won't do it or whatever. I think when parents are operating in situations like this, they do it extraordinarily well. And I've noticed that across this constituency over the years. But of course, the other problem is that uh, we do have a shortage of um, appropriately trained people to actually support uh, organisations like this. We've got an issue about that, and there's no question about it. Um, and that is something that uh, we have to uh, 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 deal with. And it's one of the reasons why it's so important that um, our um, extension of childcare to parents who are in work is properly managed, because we do need to make sure that the children are actually in, in situations which are safe and well regulated and well managed. Uh, high quality child. Yeah, no, no, high nobody, quality nobody, child. nobody denies that. It's absolutely <laughs> critical. <laughs> critical. <laughs> the children are in environments where uh, their safety is paramount. And their understanding of their development as well. Not just their safety, but how. Well, all of these are obvious points. Um, nobody is for well, one minute suggesting otherwise, I don't think. Just to go back to the volunteering um, Hill Valley Vale, um, we've got 50 uh -huh. volunteers across Hill Valley Vale, 50 plus, but they yeah. are coordinated by volunteer coordinators yeah. and supported by trained staff. And yeah. without that in place, it wouldn't be. Well, I don't suppose it would, but you've made two good points now straight off. One is you've got volunteers and they're really appreciated. And secondly, that they do need coordinated and managed. And there's a cost um, to there's, And there's no... Yeah. And, 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 and you, you also said earlier that there would be professional support here at any time beyond April uh, 17. Now, we don't know what that looks like. I'm not professing to know that because, because uh, this is, as, as I've said frequently, um, uh, a consultation, but you would want to have a proper professional leadership of a structure like this. Yeah. Yeah. How yeah. do you think less would be unacceptable? That's the real problem with the consultation and with the proposals, is it seems that that is not going to be there anymore. And the, and the point already made is the fact that because there, because there are people here, an organisation here running it, they can pull in volunteer help. Um, and, and the value of children's centres has been recognised. It's been recognised by the University of Oxford. The savings that accrue from children's centres have been listed by the University of Oxford. And so, and the list that they tackle and help in terms of poverty, social isolation, mental health, disabled children is huge. And what it feels like is about to happen is for the county council to save tens of thousands of pounds. They are going to cut back on the service provision here. <laughs> 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 
And, and that is that is the <laughs> fundamental problem underlying this. Yeah. That the county council, it feels like, is not looking at expanding children's services. Mm -hmm. What it is doing is finding a way to reduce the. Well, you are a county council, so you're really here. Quite, quite well, the council. Okay. Uh, three things I have stressed already. I'll do it again. This centre is still going to be here and post. Well, the local for a year, but that's not very yeah. long, is it? You're only guaranteeing no, it for a year. No, no, no. Uh, this centre, this centre is not closing. It's, 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 it is subject to a, 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 a consultation, and certainly from what I'm hearing is that you are determined that this centre is properly supported, and that's the message I've got. Uh, and, uh, so if I'm not you live in Peggy or Cash Screen, if you live in Peggy or Cash Screen, you expect to ask single parents to go to Stone Eyes or Parliament Centre. Well, by the Cash Screen Centre. Well, uh, we're talking about this centre. Um, yeah, uh, uh, yes, well, I, take, I take my grandchildren to the Cash Screen Centre sometimes, so I'd yeah. like to know about that. That's good. Yeah, well, uh, again, presumably that's going to be the same sort of consultation oh. process as this one. Uh, I'm happy to go to the Cash's Green one as well, if you think that would be helpful. But we're talking about this one now, um, and, I, and I think it's fair to concentrate on it. Um, and I am really keen that it remains uh, in place and operational to the, to, to the appropriate standards and uh, ambitions that I've already really set out. Okay, well then, can I just, that's great to hear. So what are you going to do to make sure that it does stay open? Yes. Well, first of all, I've listened to all of you as uh, part of the consultation yeah. process. I have to admit, I'm um, not um, uh, in charge of the consultation, and I'm not in charge of the decision making, but I have made it clear to uh, Paul McLean that this is a really good centre and should remain. Now, um, it is important, and Bill is coming up with some... I'm going to tell you the time's up. behind you, so if you just want to finish up... Yeah, yeah, um, the, you know... The bill is, is keen to uh, uh, make, keep me fully informed on what, what, is, what is desirable and possible in this centre. I think that's a fair comment. Yeah, and, and we would like you perhaps to make representations up to, and, to uh, and I will our uh, follow that up as appropriate because, um, you know, I want to leave you with three key points. One, this centre should remain here. Two, it needs to be properly uh, um, uh, provided for. And three, we need more outreach. Now, I don't think there's much wrong with that within the context of a consultation. You can bet your boots that if there wasn't a consultation and decisions were made without the consultation, there'd be a load of complaints about that. So I think that we're doing the right thing generally by consulting and by listening and by responding to questions in the way that they have. Well, can I just think, how can the local authority and these services do that when the government is actually cutting the money that comes? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's no, there's no point on the consultation which says leave everything as it is. <laughs> well, look, this is a job for the local uh, council, uh, the county council, uh, who are strapped for cash, who are um, uh, um, responsible for spending taxpayers' money, to the money in the best possible way. Uh, ultimately, they will become uh, self-sufficient, uh, i.e., uh, funding themselves through the various activities they perform, and also through council. What you mean? You, you mean you're taking away all central government funding for local authorities? That's that's what you've just said there, Neil. I just just want to make that clear. It has been a long-held ambition that local authorities are actually more responsible for um, their, their own funding. Stroud District Council has actually managed to demonstrate that that can and does work. And the County Council is in the same vein as well. Uh, so uh, this is about making sure that resources are properly allocated. There are challenges, there are priorities, of course there are. But one of the priorities, certainly for me, is young people, and especially young people. I think, um, I, I, I think we need to be fair to Neil. He's been up here for a long time, and, and, and thank you for coming, Neil. And thank can you. I say thank, thank you to everybody who's coming. The one thing with the consultation to say is, mate, if you haven't done it, do it now. Get your things in. One of the things that we as a charity are looking at doing is putting in a document to the council, making suggestions on changing the, the, what they're, they're suggesting already. 
and maybe take, take that on board as well. And I will keep Neil informed uh, for our developments that way. But uh, yeah. our big thing is targeted services and universal services should remain side by side. And that's, that's one of our big worries, really. But thank you, Neil. Well, thank, thank you very much. Bill, thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you. Thank you.